Musk turtles are becoming more and more popular among reptile keepers. Being one of the hardier turtles out there, they make for brilliant beginner species. With Marie receiving her new and improved enclosure, what better time to create a care guide? The life of a musk turtle. With the previous land section fallen to pieces, and generally a rather dull setup, the new layout embraces simplicity, all while being effective in providing a suitable environment with much more enrichment and visual appeal. But first, a quick backstory. Marie is one of my rescues. Having previously been kept with no UV lighting, a poor diet and a lack of appropriate heating, showing shell rot, retained scutes, and a need of some TLC. We've since made a lot of progress, and although her age is unknown, I hope she's around to live a long happy life while we continue to work on her issues. Unlike most turtles, these guys are better known as water walkers, rather than swimmers often crawling across the base of the aquarium, relying on bogwood and other ornaments to reach the surface to rest and breathe. For this reason, length and width of aquarium is much more important than height, with a 3 foot 90 centimetre aquarium being the smallest for an adult turtle, preferably with a 2 foot width, providing 6 square feet of space. Ideal for a lone male or male-female pair, Males are likely to fight, so best avoided. Not known as a social species, a lone turtle is definitely a safe and happy turtle, with zero chance of bullying. The tail is the perfect giveaway, with females having a much shorter base tail. Males' tails tend to be up to double the length. Requiring heated water, the first piece of kit is an aquarium heater. Completely submerged, they warm the water to your specifications. And with a built-in thermometer, they turn themselves on and off to keep a stable temp. So there's no need to turn them off in summer. If warm enough, they simply won't come on. But this isn't enough for a musk. In typical reptile fashion, musks thermoregulate. This means they don't warm their own bodies like we do, but instead rely on their environment to do it for them, which involves switching between cold and hot zones where needed. That's where the heat lamp comes in. Aiming to reach a basking spot of 30 degrees Celsius for roughly 10 hours a day, Now various owners don't provide this, most report never seeing their turtle use it so it must not be needed. Now I agree that in over a year, I've never seen Marie use hers once. However, the sand on the slate shows a different story. Cleaning the slate indicates Marie uses the basking spot three or more times per day. But I'm still yet to witness it. A species that is comfortable in water, but incredibly vulnerable on land. They'll doubt for the safety of the water at the slightest spook. Reptiles often rely on using a basking spot to raise their body temperature, in order to kickstart their metabolism, essentially relying on the heat to properly digest their food. Relating to one of the many reasons musks aren't suitable for a classic fish aquarium. Needing a land section not only to bask and dry their shell off, helping avoid shell rot, but females like Marie often pass in fertile eggs as a natural cycle, even without the presence of a male. 
Without fertilisation, these eggs won't hatch. And left without an appropriate land laying section, they may hold on to the eggs, causing a condition known as egg bound. Egg bound can cause a great deal of issues within the turtle, often requiring veterinary assistance. Hence the importance for a sand or soil section to encourage the release of infertile eggs. I've only opted for sand to avoid dirtying the water. In addition to heating, UV lighting, another absolutely necessary piece of kit. In order to digest and convert calcium for use within the body, for both bones and shell repair and growth, most reptiles require UVB, normally received from the sun to utilise this important component of the diet. Replicated in captivity with UV bulbs, strip lights being the most effective, as they canvas the entirety of the enclosure, whereas smaller bulbs often don't have the reach to do a good enough job. The danger of the lack of UVB is MBD, metabolic bone disease, where calcium is essentially taken from the bones, or simply not utilised enough to build the bones, causing dangerous deformities, brittle bones prone to breaking, and a reptile en route to a short painful lifespan. Now UV bulbs degrade over time, so it's important to change up to a fresh bulb every six months ensuring the correct output is being received. One of the best and most reliable brands in circulation is Arcadia. Light units that often last years, and bulbs that do exactly what they say on the box. A brand you can trust to provide the best for your turtle. Cheaper brands often falling short of their classifications. That can lead to very disappointing and wasteful purchases. One thing to make sure is the bulb has to be exposed to the water with nothing in between. Although the light will be unaffected, the UVB doesn't pass through glass or plastic fully, often reducing the percentage far below what is desired, if any penetrates at all. As far as decorations come, it is down to personal choice as you can see, I prefer a naturalistic setup, sand being the chosen substrate. Gravel is unsuitable, it can be ingested causing impaction, an often fatal outcome. Sand is considered much much safer and natural to use. Leaves add a very natural appeal, act as a cover for the snails to breed and continue their population. The general rule of thumb for ornaments is nothing small enough to fit in the turtle's mouth. Bogwood along with the leaves releases tannins into the water, often turning it a weak brown colour. A very natural process and extremely healthy for the water quality, helping to stabilise parameters. Bogwood also provides appropriate perching for Marie to climb out of the water and rest on. And the Elodia densa plant not only adds some colour to the aquarium, but along with the floating duckweed, adds cover for the fish Marie, all while being a natural part of the diet. Lastly, I want to cover water maintenance. From food fed and waste produced by Marie, ammonia is released 
Ammonia can be very toxic and dangerous in high quantities. But in the filter, a colony of bacteria will begin to grow. This bacteria living mainly in the filter media, not the sponges, will break the ammonia down into nitrite. Nitrite is less toxic than ammonia, but can still cause a lot of damage in high quantity. This nitrite is broken down a final time into nitrate. The nitrate is the least toxic of the three, but can still do damage in high quantity. For this reason, it's important to know how to properly clean your aquarium. Protecting the bacteria colony in order to create a healthy living space for your pets. This goes exactly the same for fish aquariums. A full tank clean or water change should never be carried out. This affects the water chemistry and the undiluted chlorine influx can wipe out the bacteria. Instead, water changes of 20 to 40% should be carried out each week. This reduces the nitrates in the water and helps replenish important minerals. The water removed from the aquarium should be used to clean the filter because the chlorine in tap water will kill the bacteria. However, the filter shouldn't be cleaned on routine, only when necessary when water flow slows down from buildup of dirt. The aim is to disturb the bacteria colony as little as possible. When filling the aquarium for the first time, or topping up, use a pet safe water conditioner, or tap safe to remove the harmful chlorine and heavy metals from the water. Most pet shops sell this. Just remember, clarity doesn't mean purity. And it's always worth buying a water test kit to keep an eye on your parameters. Checking your parameters every week to make sure they stay within reasonable bounds. I don't think I've missed anything. And I'll be doing a second video based on diet and tank mates. But I hope I've covered the importance of a proper setup. Instead of constantly chasing your tail. If you set up correctly from the start, care becomes a whole lot easier.